Namaste, Namaskaram, Vanakam, Namo, Namaha, Jai Ganesha. Please visit our website at kaskoyoga.org and there's a donate button there. Please help us out. And please stand up for the Hindu, yoga, religious, spiritual, scientific, philosophical, lifestyle. It's all of those things. Today's podcast, Ayur Jagat, Life Circles. Yes, indeed it does. Life is cyclic. Birth and death. We breathe in, we breathe out, we take food in, food comes out, we give, we receive, we wake, we sleep. The circles that are life itself. Of course, as humans, we also participate in linear thinking, beginnings and ends, in order to accomplish certain tasks. We manufacture time, past, present, and future. And these are all practical ways that we humans have figured out how to get through any one lifetime. But the problem comes in when we get stuck. In either the linear thinking or, in a sense, the circular thinking, wherein we do not respect the specifics of life. This is the ongoing balance of left and right brain. Left brain, typically the masculine or linear, and the right brain, the feminine or the circular. And if we look at linear as one, and the circular obviously as the zero, is this not the binary system? This is how life computes. So within the circles of life, we can... Draw spokes, if you will, thus creating the wheel of life. So again, there's a time for linear thinking, beginnings and ends, and then there's the overriding wisdom of the circular thinking. Now, when it comes to the religions of the world, monotheism, by its very name, is a philosophy that is basically about linear beginnings and ends, looking for a creator. And obviously when you have a creator, you must also invent a destroyer, which then becomes the devil. So it becomes a fight between beginnings and ends, who's true, who's not true. Even though there are truths and falsehoods in life, of course. But again, when we're stuck in this linear brain thinking, which is monotheism, then we see everything in a very skewed view of absolute rights and wrongs. Again, even though there are rights and wrongs in life, there's relative perception. But when it comes to the deeply important questions of life, about creation itself, it's not a coincidence that the monotheistic religions look to a creator whereas the polymorphic religions do not. Even though within them you may find monotheistic mindsets going on, of course. As we work together as human beings to try to make life compute in general and individually make our life compute. When we understand left and right brain, this really becomes totally aware to us of what we need to do in life is to learn to use our analytical, linear thinking mind, logical, rational thinking area, but also our circular, our spontaneous, more universal view, if you will. Thus knowing when to employ the circular nature, when to employ the linear nature. Now let's look at the obvious, quote-unquote, circles of life. We exist because we live on a circular planet, Bhumi Mata, they're the Hindus, and because of the perfect alignment with the moon, Chandra, and the sun, Surya. Now we also did a podcast called The 14 Doors of Perception. So let's look at these circular doors, if you will, within our human body starting with the anus, 
the genitals, the belly button, the two nipples, the mouth, the two nostrils, the two eyes and the third eye at the center, the two ears, and then the soft spot at the top of the head, the fontanella, or 14 round doors of perception. A balanced life is just that. Seeking a wonderful circular dance, if you will, going out and going in. Now let's look at the life cycles. Now we've talked about this before, but you know, the things that we really need for sustenance in life are basically given to us free of charge. This is why all true religious teachings are always given on a donation basis because we are attempting to get in tune with this very giving nature that is life itself. But we have a responsibility to return the favor, if you will. So when people go to any religious sanctuary... They need to really return the favor by giving a free will donation. You can see the wisdom in this. So if we look at the things that we really need in life, starting with air, then water, then food, are they not basically given to us freely on a daily basis? Yes, we charge money when we set up piping systems and charge money for water and when we package and sell different foods, but the basic product is given freely from the tree or from the plant. The water falls from the sky, so to the air. Air, water, and food. But let's look at the life cycles here, because they are circular in nature. The very air cycle of exhaling out carbon dioxide, and then the trees are giving us healthy oxygen. And of course, the majority of our air comes from the seas, which is produced by the plankton. So what happens when we pollute the oceans? When we rape the land, if you will, of all the trees? Hmm. So in other words, we as humans have responsibility to take care of what's actually giving us this O2 oxygen. So too with the water cycle. We have precipitation interception, infiltration, percolation, and then it rises up again in evaporation, and then condensation, and the whole process starts all over again. Round and round we go. So too with water. If we pollute the waters, look at the food cycle. We plant the seed, and up comes the plant or the tree. And it produces fruits with seeds, and its cycle of life goes on, round and round. But we have a responsibility as humans not to interrupt this cycle. So take time out to appreciate the circular nature that is life itself. And then within those circles, exercise your linear brain, your linear thinking to help you make sense out of your everyday existence. Be on time. Set your goals. Accomplish your tasks. All extremely important parts of our human journey. But take time to pause and breathe and respect the overriding circular nature of life. The wisdom of life, it's always been there. It's right at the tip of the nose. And the mouth, breathe in, breathe out, give and receive. Waking, sleeping, acting, resting. Actually, it is this understanding of the flow of action and renunciation or inaction that produces individual and world stability. As Hindus chant, Pravriti nivriti lakshanas cha jagataha stiti karanam. This action and renunciation is the cause of inner stability and world stability. 
If we're always active, not good. If we're always inactive, not good. Go find this balance of life. And respect the Ayur Jagats, the life cycles, the life circles. Yes, it does. 